Do you like having efficient faster cast rate breakpoints? Do you enjoy having animations for everything you try to do? Well, we are having none of that, cause we are playing the Trang Ul Necromancer. There are two immediate problems to solve, first, what build am I going to run? According to the internet, where of course no lies are ever told, this set is hot garbage, nothing but utter trash and should be lit on fire. So what build is it good in? Who knows? The second problem is, what am I going to do until I get to level 65 and can equip the set? So I spent a bunch of time trying to come up with ideas of something that would be fun to do before hitting that level. And what I came up with is using the Infernal set for Normal, the Sonder set for Nightmare and the Trang Ul set for Hell. This is the Infernal set. It's an early game set that gives plus 1 to necro skills, plus 10 resists all, and 20 life, straight off the start. And look at those beautiful set bonuses, plus 8 poison damage, open wounds, another plus 1 to necro skills, 20% attack rating, mana leech, half freeze duration, attack rating, and did I mention the whopping 8 poison damage at level 5? In this economy, each shit disciple set. This is Akara, the literal first NPC you encounter in the game, cause nobody cares about Warren. She sells a bunch of wands, and any single one of them can be better than this entire Infernal set. So when I was setting up for this run, I decided that instead of using the Infernal set, I would just use my Shad Stash Gold and buy a wand instead. The Infernal set run will come someday, but today is luckily not that day. I go ahead and buy the plus 2 to the wand I saw in Akara's inventory, keeping in the back of my mind that I need to look for a plus 3 wand whenever I revisit Akara. Following my usual route, I set up a TP at the tower while looking for the waypoint. But instead of farming the counters, I decide that if I'm in for a penny, I might as well be in for a pounding. So I'm just going to take the runes from the shared stash. I do, however, keep being on the lookout for plus two teeth necro hats, cause plus skills are always a welcome addition. Teeth ends up doing very poorly against the smith, so I go ahead and just kite him around and leave without dropping the hammer on him. Even at the end of Act 1, Teeth is already falling off in damage, it's just not an endgame skill after all. But our main skill for the first part of this run only unlocks at level 18. So for now we have to make Jew by kiting Andariel around and burying some baby teeth at her, which goes about as well as you would expect it to go. After the Ontario fight, my man Drognan hooks me up with a plus 3 to teeth you want and I head into act 2, where despite things feeling like they are stuck in a wall, it all ends up going pretty smoothly. One of the biggest advantages of being a shared stash run is that my average piece of equipment is going to be a bit higher quality than what I'm used to. So I go ahead and grab two rings with some FCR and resist that complement each other nicely. Plus two skills and magic find are what makes Sanctuary go round, so I grab myself a Tarn Helm and a plus two Bone Spear wand as well. With my fancy new stuff, I go ahead and make my way through the Maggot Lair, during which I make it to level 17, so I go ahead and grab myself a Tal and a Nez rune from a Mule and make myself a Stealth. And once I hit level 18, I go ahead and spec into Bone Spear as well. Bone Spear is a very straightforward skill. It's a beam that pierces, no questions asked. It's magic damage instead of physical, and it doesn't even lock you into any specific weapon. It's basically everything a Boazon could ever want. It's also the skill we are going to be using until we can use the Triangle set. Cause even though it's a new game plus, I am just not ready yet to do a full poison run again. I'm still scarred from the last time. So I go ahead and blow up Fang skin and pick up the cube. I can be as thorough as I like about the Durial fight, but the gist of it is that I can just stand there and throw bone spears at him while face tanking him. The only thing I do have to look out for is that I have to make sure that he doesn't stun lock me, cause when I'm not dealing damage, he's not dying and that is a bad thing. I drop my first piece of Sanders in the spider forest, it's Sanders superstition, which has 20 FCR and 25 mana, and apparently there's more text on it or something, I don't know. In the spider cavern, I go ahead and try to saute away Cezark the Burning by impaling him on a bone spear. But he goes ahead and reminds me that necros are still very frail by hitting me for a truckload of damage. However, more importantly, I hit level 25, which means I can go ahead and equip two more pieces of the Sanders set. The helm is called Sanders Paragon, however it is far from as good as Paragon levels are in Diablo 3 and Diablo 4. Instead, it has plus 2 defense, attacker takes damage and 35 magic find. Honestly, I've bought better helms at Charcy. 
The boots are definitely made for walking though. 40 run walk, 100 to attack rating, 5 strength and 10 dex. Those are some seriously solid boots. But I just have the one question about the set. Why does a set that is very obviously focused on melee builds get a wand without damage as a weapon? The weapon is also quite interesting, let's call it interesting. I mentioned there being more text on it than just the 20 faster cast rate and the 25 mana, but I might as well just not have bothered though. Seriously, what is the point of this weapon? Does it want to be a casting weapon? Does it want to be a melee weapon? Who knows? This entire set just feels like it's trying to be two different sets at the same time. On the one hand, it's getting faster cast rate, mana and magic find. On the other hand, it's getting tons of attack rating, stats and crowd control in the form of call damage. Like seriously, what is it trying to do? Oh well, I'm sure that once I hit level 28 and wear the full set, everything will be fixed and become obvious and clear. I ice hog Riftwing and move along towards city council, cause maybe they know the answers to my Sanders conundrum. It ends up being a piercing conversation that cuts through their core and leaves them behind as puddles of soup on the ground. In the Durance of Hate level 2, I end up cracking a giggle as the set heavy gloves dropped. These are the Sanders gloves that I am going to wear in a few levels. Surely I won't find the entire set while wearing the set. I don't have the level for them yet, so I'll show off what they do in a bit. Muffled Dragon Hand ends up almost ending the run when he causes me to have a very close encounter with some of his Hydras. However, this is a channel for Guardians, so we don't heal those here, instead we just avenge them. And speaking about avenging, we do the same with Mephisto as we did to Duriel. We can just stand there and look him in the eye while piercing him with all my power. Oh dear lord, that sounds so wrong. Luckily, I don't have to think about it anymore as Mephisto's life total has been penetrated. And as I look on the ground for the loot, I see set heavy boots. We are just one part away from finding the entire Sander set on the Sander's run. Cause those are the boots. In Act 4, I realize that my resists are complete shite, so I go ahead and make an Ancient's Pledge. We all know this one, Ral or Tal, lots of resist, yada yada. Moving things along, I go ahead and deal with Isual and Efasto. The Hellforge gets me a couple of gems and an Etherune. In the Chaos Sanctuary, I try to convert Lord the Size from a Bone Spirit user to a Bone Spear user. Cause that is what all the cool kids are doing. I also go ahead and completely obliterate the Infector of Souls. The difference between Shad Stash and No Shad Stash is wild. The Venom Lord seal is one of the hardest parts of the early game, but thanks to the Shad Stash it barely took the time to finish this sentence. Diablo and me end up having a western style shootout where the two of us are just throwing projectiles at each other until one of us goes down. The amazing gear keeps on dropping as he drops me a unique blade, which is the spectral shard. If only this was a solo cell found run, I would use that in a heartbeat. I go and whip Shank into shape, but almost end up going down in the process. Having reached level 28, I finally get to equip Sanders Taboo as well, which means I have the full set equipped. Surely now I will find out whether this set wants to be a melee set or a casting set. Turns out it's melee. The gloves have 20% increased attack speed, 24 defense and 40 life. Oh, and did I mention the 9 to 11 poison damage? Get shit on some more disciple set. For wearing the full set you get some nice bonuses, plus 1 to skills, some attack rating, life leech, defense, mana and 50 mf. Honestly, not bad at all for a melee character. But why does it have a wand as a weapon? Can you imagine if the Sunder set weapon instead of being a bone wand was a javelin or a bow or a maul or a hammer or anything else? It would be so good. Instead you get this weird caster weapon on what is otherwise obviously a melee intended set. Seriously, which build wants this as it is now? Please tell me in the comments so I don't have to figure it out myself when I do the Sanders run at an unfortunately inevitable point. The Sanders set is so impressive on my necro that I end up almost getting curb stomped during my Eldritch farm. Luckily, at level 29, some real gear unlocks in the form of a skin of the Viper Magi. With its plus 2 skills, faster cast rate and resistances, this armor is amazing and I'm going to use it until I can wear the triangle set. With my farming done, I go ahead and tell Anya about the Ice Age killing the dinosaurs. The Ancients are just a kiting test and I take down all three of them without a problem. After the Ancients fight, I realize I'm basically gearless cause the Sunder set doesn't work at all with my build. 
the goal is still to make it to the triangle set. So for now I'm just keeping myself in good spirits. Because if the triangle set is even a semblance of as terrible as the internet has me believing, hell is going to be well aptly named. Equipping a spirit is like having your life in order, it won't last. But for now there is nothing to worry about, it's that good. I go ahead and clear out Lister and his friends and make my way towards Bale who just stands there with his back towards me so I go ahead and shoot at him until he dies. Thanks to the shared stash I'm so strong I can even just ignore the clone. Bale ends up dropping me a studded leather which is a twitch throw. This used to be one of the best items in the game in classic, only being outclassed by the most insane of rares. Thanks to its increased attack speed, pile of stats and 25 increased chance of blocking. Which actually used to be really good, cause back in those days block wasn't dependent on decks. So when you got 25% increased chance to block, that was it. You literally just got 25% extra chance to block. I kind of wish that they kept that to be honest. These days however, Twitch throw isn't partnered anymore, so it goes ahead and becomes a mercenary armor to pay its bills. I also go ahead and solve every single mana problem I could ever have by giving my mercenary an insight. Nightmare is much of the same as normal. On a regular solo cell found run, Nightmare is the easiest difficulty because you are getting powerful but the game isn't scaling much in difficulty yet. So I go ahead and clear corpse fire, grab the Mollus, tell Agent Smith that there is no hammer, take care of Andariel and Duriel level 42 I go ahead and equip a humunculus and I can talk forever about why I would do that but just read the stats this thing is insane it has it all level 42 also unlocks killers so I go ahead and grab my only poison and bones killer I'm going to claim that I'm only using one of them to make the game not too easy but you can of course use more if you'd like the Durant's dolls remind me of my mortality once more before I go ahead and clear out Mephisto the Nightmare Hellforge gets me a shale rune and the Chaos Sanctuary ends up being even easier than it was on normal. I needed to do a bit of kiting for the Infector but nothing much happened. After that I went ahead and gave Diablo a hug. With Act 4 done I've hit level 45, meaning I get to equip the Triangle Gloves. And while they have the first hint of what I'm going to be running for hell, I'll talk about it more later on in the video. First it's time to clear out Act 5. So everybody wave goodbye to Shank, Frozenstein, Azap, Madoc, Gorlick and Talik. The throne is filled with souls, what else is new? But I'm just one shotting them so it's not much of a problem. We also go ahead and wave goodbye to Bale. With that it is time for the big level farm of this run. To wear the complete triangle set requires level 65 and some of my other pieces require even higher levels. Luckily not all the pieces have that high of a level requirement. So I go ahead and put on the shield and the armor. For now this seems like as good a time as any to do my respec. So I go ahead and spec into the strength required for the triangle pieces and the rest of my stats go into vitality. Skill wise I go ahead and max poison nova and dump a bunch of points into the synergies for it. I also go ahead and put a point into lower resist. From here on out this is going to be a poison nova run. I'll show why once I equip the full triangle set. For now though we are just grinding players a terra zones which makes all the farming go pretty fast. And by pretty fast I mean with the power of editing it goes by in seconds. So I hit level 65, I go ahead and equip triangles guys. And besides netting 150 mana, this helm is actually pretty trash. Couldn't they at least have added sockets or something? Seriously it's so bad. Luckily the other pieces are much better. The armor grants plus 2 to summoning skills which I won't be using, and 40 faster run walk and 40 poison resist, so that is at least 2 more useful mods than the helm had. The set bonuses this gets are bonkers though, 25% physical damage reduction and 50% lightning resist is a big game. The real power however is in the other pieces, for instance the shield has plus 2 to skills, a pile of stats, fire and poison resist. And the best mod is in the set bonus that it gets in a sweet 25% minus to enemy poison resistance. The belt has life, mana and cannot be frozen. The sweet 40% cold resist is just a bonus. And the best part of the set are the gloves. These are best in slot for a ton of builds. Not even only poison builds and it's easy to see why. 69 defense, plus 2 to cursors, 20 faster cast rate and seriously I don't know why they come up with this but I love it. It has 25% to poison skill damage. Oh and some cold resist. But 25% to poison skill damage that's just that is so powerful what were they thinking? Please don't change it but what were they thinking? 
And then there are the full set bonuses, plus 3 to necro skills, 200 defense, 60% mana regeneration and 50 resist all. So basically plus 3 skills and 50 all resist, which is good, but the list is much longer. However, the rest of it is very much based on the flavor of the set. It's all about making sure that you can be a proper vampire. With the 20 life leech, fire mastery and a bunch of fire skills, it's all about looking cool. But I'll do a separate vampire lord cosplay video in the future. This one is about trying to see if the set is even any good. The farming isn't done yet though, we still need a few levels for our weapon and amulet. The skills I gain during those levels start going into clay golem with one point into the golem mastery and summon resist each. For the rest of the run I will be maxing out clay golem. And yes, I know corpse explosion exists, but that's just too easy, you'll just be a corpse explosion build. At level 66 I go ahead and grab a dad's web from a mule, if only this was the weapon from the dead set instead of that stupid war sword. Plus 2 all skills with an additional plus 2 to poison and bone skills, mana after each kill and life after each kill are already wildly impressive mods. Even with just those I would easily use this weapon. However, the biggest thing on this weapon is the minus to enemy poison resistance. This is the best of my dev webs at minus 46% which translates to 46% more damage on all my poison skills. And yes, that works the way you want it to work, it's really good. I'll show. Here is some footage of me farming the terror zones on players 8 without the dead swap. See how everything kind of survives, kind of pretends to still be powerful? Don't worry, we can fix that. Here is some footage of the pain players a terror zone with the dead web. Look at that, the difference is astounding. Poison Nova is a fantastic build for farming. I was able to do even the pits at TC85 area on players 8, which is basically the most difficult area you can create before hitting the terror zones. And I just went through it, no problem. I also ended up finding a goal rune. Wait, why are we blurring the background instead of moving things along? Is this another one of your look at how fast I'm finding gear and how lucky I am moments? Why yes, yes it is. I drop off the gull in the stash and continue on questing only to have a Shaco drop from Rakanishu. Too bad, it's not on a solo self found run, but still, always a fun find. Decent roll on the defenses as well. And at level 67 I go ahead and equip a Mara's Kaleidoscope for its resists, stats and plus the skills. After that footage it's time to talk about the vampire in the room though. As you can see after equipping the entire set you turn into a vampire. Which makes total sense lore wise with the necromancer moving away from the whole standard nephilim fair and committing themselves to the balance instead of purely to the gods of sanctuary. Which is why they don't get that neat little swirly thing around them for the full set. But enough pretending I know the lore. Let's get back to the gameplay. This isn't just a cosmetic change, your character gets full on swapped into a vampire enemy and this is why people say the triangle set is horrible, cause people would never overstate anything on the internet. Diablo 2 is a game that works with breakpoints, if you have zero faster cast rate you get X frame cast animation and if you have more faster cast rate you hit more breakpoints and your casting will become faster. These are the breakpoints for the necromancer. And these are the breakpoints for the vampire. As you can tell, they are much, much, much worse. And this is the reason the internet has been calling this set bad for decades, even up to the point that I was actually nervous to start this run. One thing that does happen a lot though, is that when you cast a spell, it just doesn't show. Probably some vampire lord wonkiness, it does go off, you just don't see it. Consider this your small warning about that. But is it really that bad? Let's look at the upsides. First off, you look really cool. And because vampire lords don't have a walk or run animation, you get to go at full speed while walking. Meaning you get to keep your block and defense no matter what happens. You're also missing out on a bunch of other animations, but I'll show those off later. You also get a bunch of fire skills, but I'll be trying those out in a different run, cause I'm nervous enough about how hard this is going to be as is. Well, I'm not going to keep you waiting for another second to try and keep you hooked or anything like that. Like I said, I thought this run was going to be tedious, cause I had never heard anything good about this set. So let's round things out and get going, shall we? Only one thing left to fix before I head into hell, the sockets. 
My life total ended up very low, so I decided to put a perfect ruby in both the armor and the helmet. The set gives a big boost to every resistance except for fire, so I fixed that by putting a Rel rune into the shield. I also chose to wear Algeo boots to compensate for the same things. But I don't mind the 40% faster run walk either. I fucked up at first by wearing a nature's peace ring to give myself access to oak sage and some more poison resist. But I quickly realized during the den of evil that it messed with the corpse explosion. So I went ahead and switched to a bull cathos ring for some more life and a plus skill. I also went ahead and brought along the hardest working geech charm I've ever seen and a rotting fisher grand charm. Cause let's be real, no one is ever farming this entire set during their playthrough, so I might as well go and use a poison thunder charm to break the immunities. I didn't opt for a torch in any though, which just like on my bone skills I'm going to claim is because of balance reasons and to keep things interesting, and totally isn't because my necro died with all of that stuff on him. Just a few weeks ago. Totally didn't happen, I'd never die. I am immortal. And I socketed the dead's web with a poison facet. Cause what else? Like what else are you gonna put in there? I head into hell and well, what do you know? The internet was wrong. Who could have guessed that? Misinformation on my internet? What has the world come to? Well, after that world shattering revelation, here comes my straight up final review for the set already. This set is so powerful that it straight up one shots the entire game. I'm just going to show the entire boss fight for this run, cause people have been saying the Trang set is weak for decades at this point, and it deserves to show off how ridiculously strong it actually is. Seriously, this run had 99 problems, but Trangs wasn't one. I am just one-shotting everything and doing act bosses in seconds. One of the biggest problems I ended up having with writing this script was trying to make it seem even slightly like a challenge to beat the game with this. I mean, after being so nervous, I was all like, oh no, this is gonna be horrible. I need to write this script where I'm like going for the hardest run and this and that, and it's all just so fucking shat on by this set being actually really good. So yeah, I got so fucked while writing the script, it was insane, I had like this whole thing in my head of okay, we have struggle, we have survival, we have destiny, we have this and that, and then we have this revival arc where the character turns out to be able to beat the game and it'll be fun and challenging, and then I just completely shat on everything and it was like no, you're too good, my script, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, that's okay, fuck my script, this set deserves better, after all these years it deserves to finally look really cool and awesome, cause it is, seriously this was one of the most fun playthroughs I have ever done, I mean just look at me, obliterating everything, act 1, get fucked, act 2, not a chance, act 3, don't even make me laugh, Act 4, pfft, easy, baby game. Act 5, nope, still just an easy baby game. Seriously, what is there even to talk about that I can't just show you? Want to see me obliterating some act bosses? Well, here is exhibit A for Andy, or Annihilated as you can call her as well. Diablo, I don't know who that is, I only know Diablo. The second D, Duriel, don't make me laugh. Let's see, who's left? Mephisto? The Ancients? Treffen call? Bitch, please, I can easily slap my way through that. Am I forgetting anyone? Hefasto? The Smith? Isual? None of them even come close to withstanding the power. Nothing can stop me. Well, except this door. But I don't like this door, so I'm just not gonna talk about him. Seriously, this setup completely annihilates the entire game, no questions asked. Let me think, what else is that? Death Lords? 
Tschüss. Tschüss. Ich kann so. Alright, there is one final thing, a bail run, so let's go and clear out the minions. Pay attention though, cause it's a blink and you'll miss it kind of thing. First group, gone. Second group, poison immune, oh no, this is the worst. Anyway, dead. The Trevacore rejects, not even a trace of them left when I'm done with them. Venom lot, sure, no problem. Not even Lister is even close to a threat. And after all of that, it is time for the final bail fight, which goes very differently than you might think. It's a hard fight. Just kidding, I completely fucking destroyed him. So yeah, after years of hearing that the set is terrible, unplayable, trash, garbage, dumpster fire bullshit, I ended up absolutely loving it. And I hope you will too. With Bale defeated, I'll pull up my stats and skills again, so everyone can see them. It's just your standard Poison Nova fair, nothing special going on with that. Gearwise, you can do whatever you like. And with that, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing. I'm also just gonna go ahead and casually mention that I have memberships enabled and a Patreon available as well. Just a casual mention, you know how it goes. And with that, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.